And we'll jump right into open lines. Let's see, what button am I looking for? That one, right there. So everyone can see my pretty face. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to your Friday night open lines. Wow, now it seems like the microphone is like dipped out. I don't know what's going on there. We'll have to try and get it sorted at some point during the proceedings this evening. Uh, but I am the Drizzle. Today is February 2nd, 2024. Everywhere in COVID land. Well, in some parts, it's already February 3rd. Uh, but let me be, I guess, officially the last now and possibly even the first to wish each and every one of you a Merry Marmotmas. Yes, a Merry Marmotmas to all the practitioners of the faith, no matter where you find yourselves out in COVID land. Uh, we, we are even working on a holiday. So, uh, you know, there, there is that. We don't get time and a half for anything. It's uh, straight value for value, uh, as we always do it here at Liberty Radio. And uh, let's see. I think we've already got a caller on the line. Uh, caller, hold, hold on. Actually, I have to turn your mic on. There we go. Caller, where are you at? What you hauling? That's you, Rob. Go, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize I was up. Yeah, you're I'm doing on. great out here in South Jersey, living the dream. You know, trying to stay away from this uh, new world over bullshit. Um, I do have a question that uh, maybe someone can answer for me. So, like, I've seen Whitney Webb's work, and it's pretty impeccable as far as like the documentation and all the. Uh, the stuff that she's uncovered along the way. But back when her and her partner were having a little trouble, the fact that oh, she yeah. went out to social media and started, uh, you know, airing the dirty laundry for anybody who would listen. Right. And, uh, right. you know, I've known a lot of guys who've had lunatic women who uh, tried to sully their names as well. And I just kind of wonder, you know, Who's who's in the right? Who's in the wrong? Or are they both part of that whole controlled apparatus of uh, giving you pieces of information that are true, but at the same time, like suckering you with, you know, space aliens on Mars controlling, you know, the president kind of shit. Right. Um, man, that's uh, yeah. Right off the bat, Rob jumps in and just drops a bombshell on uh, on the open lines. Wow. Um, there, I mean, there, the thing is there's, when it comes to this type of situation, right, where you have a relationship that has a romantic relationship that has ended badly between two prominent figures of the media community, at least as far as like our family of media is concerned. And, Mud starts flying, especially in public. Like, that's just a bad look all around, right? Like, it's it's bad on his part, bad on her part. Like, you got kids caught in the middle. Like, that's no good. So, it's unfortunate that it happened. It's unfortunate that it became a public issue. And the audience of both of these individuals essentially became involved in what should always have been a personal matter. Absolutely. That's how I feel. But I mean, what are you going to do, man? We're all human, right? Like, yeah, I, I also take into account that I'm like 20 years older than they are. So, right. Um, I have a little more perspective on the world than they do, but I, you know, I see people, I, I've been seeing that shit since Facebook started. People going onto Facebook and airing their grievances on friends, family, yeah. uh, loved ones, and it's just like, do, do you really think that that's the appropriate place to put all your shit out in the world so everybody sees it, or would you rather like you know work with the partner 
or you know, I mean, when you got a kid together, it's a complicated situation. And, well, especially uh, like a, a an infant, essentially that is in the hospital, right? Yeah, and exactly. The, the 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 picture that Whitney painted of what was going on uh, with the child in the hospital was, I wouldn't say it was necessarily dire, uh, but there were times that you could tell that that she was, you know, more anxious than what we're used to seeing in her work, right? Like you could see that there was a more personal element to what she was putting out in like the Telegram channel and stuff. So it, yeah, and it she, was, she was putting in the time with her child as right, well. And right. And dropped off the screen for a while. And, you know, she's obviously a caring, loving mother, but that doesn't, you know, exclude the other possibility that she's uh, narcissistic and tells stories because... right. You know, I, I just don't, I, I think that whole like approach, cause I mean, I, I followed the Twitter thread of it and she was the one who initially jumped out there. And I, I mean, to his credit, he didn't try to bury her with some like scandal. He just kind of was like, you know, I want to see my kids, you know, kind of thing. And, you know, from my own personal experience, I've seen women do that to friends of mine where oh shit women have done it to me (laughs) you know i've been through the exact same situation myself like almost exactly not quite but almost exactly so i i can understand where he's coming from problem is i can also understand where she's coming from because yeah exactly if we are to take these people at their word and believe the stories that they are weaving they're both giving us believable versions of events that they know better than everybody else. Right. Yep. So the, when you're getting that to me, it's typically going to end up being that the truth is somewhere in between those two stories. And it's probably not uh, nearly as neat and clean as either one is trying to make it out to be. Yeah, I, I saw uh, Johnny was on with uh, Dr. Shiva, that crazy motherfucker. Oh, Jesus. And uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he he touched on it a little bit, but he didn't really get too deep into it. But, but what he basically insinuated was that Whitney was taking money from Kennedy, who's, you know, in bed with the Zionists. And uh, huh. wait, that's... Shiva was saying this or Johnny was? Johnny was. He was saying that she was taking money from the Children's Health Defense and some other organization uh, tied to that, the Kennedy funds as well. So, Mm. like, I don't, I didn't see any documentation or, you know, proof, but, you know, it's just something I saw today. So I haven't had a chance to run it down. But it's interesting because, you know, if you listen to Shiva, everybody's a fucking shill. Right. And Except you know, I think the truth is somewhere in the middle of that. I know there's people out in the independent that are just, you know, they need money to survive. That's a realistic thing. And they'll chill if they have to. Well, and I mean, then, yeah, we all need money to survive. Yeah. Unfortunately, the people who are telling the most truth are the ones it, that, that that's kind of like almost a measure to me, sadly, is like the people who are really, looking out and trying to be as independent as possible are the ones who aren't making any goddamn money. They're not getting promoted. They're getting shadow banned. Yeah. Um, like if Corbett started out today, he'd probably be back to being an English teacher. Yeah. He, he got in, in the era where he was able to accumulate enough people <laughs> who valued his work and, uh, recognize the, the quality of his work yeah. with his, link you know documentation everything he's talking about well that's kind of the point that rich always makes with being consistent right and and just like showing up for yourself and continuing to do the thing whatever the thing is that you're showing up for because the more you do that and the more consistent you become in doing that and the longer you just keep going regardless of whatever obstacles you encounter you're you're going to be successful eventually because you're going to along the way you're going to eliminate everything that is going to potentially cause you to be a failure 
Like once you remove all of all of the negativity and all of that stuff that's holding you back, the only thing you're left with is success. So yeah, that's after facts. you're doing it 15 years, that is fact. You better be making some money. <laughs> you Absolutely. Know? I mean, that's, that's how I learned my trade. I, I do IT work and it's like you fail, you fail, you fail until you find the solution and you do it enough times and then you know the solution before, you know, there's a problem that breaks out. So it's uh, very true in real life. Who else we got on the line? Woohoo! Hey, is uh, this yeah, thing working? Yeah, it's working. What's up, Yana? You know, I, I guess since Rob just jumped right into the big gay pile to stop the future timers from turking or gerbs, I will chime in on the whole Johnny V. Whitney public uh, relationship uh, dissolution. You know, it, it when it comes to dirty laundry, you know, uh, uh, well, just take the example of the Chabad uh, Libovitz there in New York City with that Jewish Hasidic community. When you see the poop and blood stained mattresses out in public, puts a whole different light on those um, secret tunnels. And the same thing replies uh, applies to um, Webb and Vedmore when it comes to, you know, on the one hand, airing out the dirty laundry and and the nasty breakup. But secondly, and more importantly to me, going individually on other shows and then um, disparaging the former partner um, is bad enough, and it does not enhance your own credibility or bona fides. Not at all. Airing very personal and private details from your own personal relationships in a public format when you're putting yourself out there as a public journalist working in the public interest, it becomes immediately awkward for everyone involved to to be like that. But more importantly, in this particular case of a relationship gone bad, it's a completely different ball of wax because there are young children involved. And the fact that now you're dealing with uh, a joint custody or, you know, a relationship gone bad, but there's still young, young children to be raised and visitation and such to be worked out. Now the onus is on you to be even more of an adult since children are involved. And so to be like that, to me, does more damage to more children involved than the adults. And so that's where I find this to be just absolutely tragic. Um, you know, and I, for one, still have the utmost journalistic respect for both of these individuals, the male and female involved. It's just uh, really heartbreaking. My heart goes out to the young children involved in this failed relationship uh, oh, because airing this publicly. Yep. means that the children will eventually see and hear it. Um, and, and that's just terrible. Well, and that's, that's kind of the thing too, is again, I understand that they're young, right? I understand that there, there are all sorts of circumstances that are being brought to bear upon this situation. We'll take all of that into account. That's fine. But when you're looking at like the fallout from, from Some. what is happening and the very public fallout, that like is there for anybody to see should they choose to like when you start looking at at, like who's really being affected obviously the children number one they're the number one victim of what's taking place number two is actually the work the credible work that both of them have done is is now you know that much less essentially because of you know, what we're seeing as far as character flaws being displayed for, again, anyone to uh, to partake in and, and give their opinion on just like we're doing. And, and it really, it them, as far as like it affecting them personally as individuals, that's like at the very bottom of the poll. But unfortunately, 
it seems like that's that's what's at the forefront of each of their minds because you know again they're trying to present themselves in the best possible light as they make their case to the public court it it kind of almost has the soap opera like feel or as they call them in mexico telenovelas right telenovela ay dios mio you know like a telenovela um that you know, it's on. You know, you know all, all of the non sequiturs aside. Uh, you know that that's kind of what I was getting to, and and Drizzle was backing up the point that this kind of puts a funk. It puts a bad smell on their work when it. You're kind of like it almost feels like you're stepping in the middle of a very personal private argument um and then it's made public where it's brought out in public venues uh and kind of spectacularized um and so uh, again you know even putting the issue of the children aside unfortunately they're so young i I don't think this is immediately causing a lot of harm but in terms of mental harm obviously the issue of uh, the breakup of mother and father and not having a nuclear platonic unit anymore but more importantly johnny and whitney both have done such amazing journalistic work i really really hate to see both of them disparaging either of each other's work um but i mean i guess when you get to that certain point of a breakup you know it's it's it, it just becomes an exercise in meanness and vindictiveness. And, and, you know, and honestly, sadly, this will just end up pushing more viewers and uh, followers away, I think. Yeah. Uh, I think because right. everyone has personal and private shit to deal with in their own lives. And then to have that in the middle of your independent media when you're trying to chat and connect with everybody else and get truthed up again and you know it's it, it's just I, I describe it as a funk or a bad smell it's just the you know it just it, it kind of freaks everybody out when when you got when you get in the middle i mean it's spectacularized to the point of like an east coast west coast rapper battle or something and it's like every single <laughs> time one of them goes on a show all right, East Coast rappers, I'm repping for the West, and y'all can suck it, all oh, y'all. And, and and it's like back and forth, and and so you know the because of the nature of this back and forth, it's actually lending even more credence to the naysayers and poop throwers who have mm-hmm. been saying that the both of them or one or the other is limited hangout. Um. I don't really see it as that. I, I see it as much simpler. I'm going to take Occam's razor on this and say, you know, it's a really, it's a really, really messy breakup, and it's being done in the most public and ugliest way possible. And as is the case when you hang out dirty laundry, there's literally a funk and a smell in the air. So anyway, because yeah. poop. Yeah. Well, well, but before the breakup and the books were coming out, she had given him, you know, mad props for the research that he had done. And I've seen his research, like the WEF, the Klaus, Klaus Schwab uh, research that he did was impeccable stuff. I mean, he uncovered a lot of stuff that nobody else was talking about. Yeah, particularly when it came to the lineage and genealogy of Herr Klaus Schwab. Mm-hmm. I mean, he took the forefront and lead on that and also did it in a Ryan Christian style method with actual links to documents and where you can download the stuff yourself. You know, I'm not just, you know, uh, Twitter screenshots from a blue check. I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> actual well, he did, Don't forget, stuff. he did a lot of good uh, <laughs> research around Stanley Pottinger as well. Uh-huh. Like if you guys haven't had a chance to uh, look at that series from Johnny, go check it out on his YouTube channel. Yeah, it's uh it's crazy 
how limited the uh, independent media is. And now that the uh, mainstream has come to realize that people are, you know, pretty much done listening to them and they're looking for alternative sources, people are easily compromised. There's not a lot of integrity in the uh, independent media. And it's, it's really obvious who's not taking checks from somebody. Well, the other thing to keep in mind, um, Rob, is the fact that today, in this year of our Lord 2024, the means through which most people are accessing independent media content, whether it's pre-record live or they're watching later on replay, um, it's all pretty much accessed through the gatekeepers of mm -hmm. social media, whether we're talking about okay. through Facebook and Instagram or through Twitter and TikTok or through WhatsApp or through Google and YouTube. Um, I would include Rumble in that. I don't see Rumble as yeah. a special I would throw outlier of well. super duper free speech platformage. I mean, you know, I might say that about Odyssey, but I wouldn't say that about Rumble because Odyssey and BitChute, on the other hand, are not trying to constantly extend the length of their mandatory commercials at the beginning of any video that you want to watch. Um, so what becomes the issue then when it comes to presenting information and content as a uh, self-proclaimed independent journalist, which I myself would include in such category as El Corresponsal, as uh, Drizzle and I have crafted a, a few of, a, of the journalism's uh, videos as, as well as uh, written content on occasion over at manufacturingreality.org. O-R-G. Uh, and so... When you're looking at things through the lens, you're accessing your information through social media ways. It's already set up so that the content creator is rewarded with those serotonin hits in the brain cells from more likes, from more followers, from all these different data analytics and metrics that are given to the content creator that you're just supposed to assume the numbers are real. The monetation is real. The marketing is fair. The reach is fair. That the table's not tilted. But, of course, <laughs> I don't think any of us here are dumb. Hey, what's nah. up, Scotty? Uh, and oh. so the reality is we know about the shadow banning and the demonetization. And ultimately, uh, no one can speak better to deplatforming than YouTube hates high Yona. I mean, God damn. <laughs> they canceled my last fucking sock account, and I never even fucking posted a goddamn thing. I got made moderator by Roar Media, and ain't gone in 24 hours. Ha <laughs> ha, there he is. So, <laughs> boy, that boy, they have my number, and it's not even a number. It's just kill them now. So, all these content creators are getting caught up in the serotonin rush of, they really love me. You know, this is what we were talking about last night. Uh, clout, shout ego building it becomes a sort of daily routine of narcissism to constantly check social media how many people love me now how many followers do i got now how much response am i getting now and basing happiness or your the wideness of your smile will be perfectly proportional to whatever information your social media app is giving back to you rather than personal relationships in real life. And so it's really disgusting for me to see the social media clips of Johnny and Whitney going on the internet to just completely trash IRL when I myself, no offense to the internet, <laughs> again, I'm not trying to be an asshole to people that are on the internet with us right now, but I really prefer the IRL type stuff because I'm a living human being and I like meet and greet and doing things in person. I'm just old fashioned like that, I guess. But, you know, then again, 
Ubering and door dashing and being a land surveyor and everything I've ever done my whole life. I've always been door to door, property corner to property corner, walking one line to the next line, dealing with people in the courthouse and the records room, dealing with landowners, dealing with people that eat, dealing with people riding in my vehicle as Uber riders. I mean, just constantly interacting with the public. I couldn't imagine living in a Facebook meta Zuckerberg world, wearing the, the ugly fucking goggles and doing the whole virtual avatar, high Yona, smoking virtual weeds. God, that's the worst fucking mids of all, well, Rob. It's it's <laughs> a good thing that you don't spend time on social media, Yona, because if you did, that's all you would have fucking seen today is fucking yeah. people sucking up to Tim Cook and Apple. Oh, look at my fucking Apple goggles. I'm so fucking cool. Don't you want to be like me? Yeah, all, all that is is like the room that you go into and everybody's sitting there not interacting with each other, looking at their cell phones, like five, six people. Like with with the stupid fucking uh, Apple goggles, now you can see those people while you're doing that stupid shit, and you're still not interacting with them and becoming more and more into the technocratic uh, slave prison. So <laughs> that's what happened at my live gig tonight, Rob. I went up to play at the six thousand dollar grand piano again, and you know I. After playing two or three songs, when I got up there, people were just milling around and right by the piano and talking. Once I started talking, they all kind of moved away. And then when I got done with the third song, I took a break to get a drink, you know, wet my throat again. And I look around and the people that are sitting over by me now have their cell phones, but they've plugged in the earphones. on, And so they've got the earphones in both ears. And then two of the other ones, had the uh, wireless earpieces, uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth in the ears, which has got to be good for your brain. I mean, your brain never gets enough EMF. Give it more. Um, I'm sure it's safe. We don't really know, but I, I just take a chance on life. Um, c- couldn't be anything wrong with wearing <laughs> a Bluetooth in your ear all day and all night, every night. Surely not. Um, but, uh, and, they're, and none of them are interacting. And again, it's like we're literally living in fucking dystopia. But this dystopia is much more intense for the college educated. You know, I'm finding that it's particularly the students and the faculty at Division I Marshall University here in Huntington. We are Marshall. Yes. Um, uh, and we need more football players. Another plane crash. Anyways, uh, yeah, it's too well, soon. The, <laughs> the metaverse was never meant to be like a, another place that you go, right? Like, I, I guess the way that they were marketing it, that was kind of how they were making it seem. But when you actually look at what they were doing and how they were developing the technology, what they're actually planning to do is... They're just going to enclose you in the metaverse kind of piecemeal over time, over about five, 10 years, maybe 15 at the longest. And they're just constantly adding little bits on top of you until the metaverse will just be all around you and there won't be anything you can do about it. And so, you know, to me, I make the comparison. You could go to the beach in real life and walk on the dry sand until it's wet sand, until you've got the tides of the globe washing over your toes and ankles, right? And then walk along the edge of the shoreline of the beach at the fucking ocean. Or put on your goggles. We're going to walk you out to this little kiddie pool where we poured a few gallons of water in the front yard and sit down in the kiddie pool with your meta goggles on and we'll pour a little bit of sand in your little kiddie pool there that we bought from walmart for 25 bucks and uh all right now you can pretend that you're at the beach and 10 years from now you won't even be able to leave the kiddie pool because it will literally be enclosed and fucking chain link fencing and that's basically what we're saying because that's basically what it is It, it, it it can only ever be a simulacrum of the IRL. 
no matter how good the virtual, no matter how deep the fake, it's always going to be a simulacrum for the real thing. I mean, I'm sure there's really great robot pussy out there. But real life pussy, always going to be better. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. There's, there's no metaverse version of that that's going to take its place. <laughs> My girl, they're going to try. In the background. Matter of fact, I think they are trying at the moment. Like you know, that's that's the actual attack vector that they're working like, on like, right now. Like uh, apparently, they just want to like hit everybody with AI porn, and that's how we're we're going to submit. They want to turn us all into submissives. You know, it's amazing to me overhearing the conversations every day and having conversations every day with stranger after stranger. How incredibly intelligent and street smart are the homeless and the poor of the working class are they have when to directly compared to <laughs> bachelor of arts and liberal arts education fucking joe biden stickers on the car fucking idiot i mean it how in the hell have the professional managerial class managed to turn themselves into literally the dumbest fucking group of people on planet fucking earth. They're literally fucking willingly, proudly stupid. Well, I think we have to be at, at the third generation, right? Like you had the back at the beginning of the 1900s, you had uh, all the industrialists that got together and they put the structures in place in order to be able to, to take over whatever the fuck they wanted to take over, right? And eventually those people got old and they died and they left all of that shit that they had built to their children. And then those people got old and died and left even more stuff to their children. And those morons who, they were born to, to wealth. They were born to power, right? They don't understand the concept of lack because they've never experienced it in their lives. They've only ever known abundance, right? Those dum-dums, because they believe that, that they deserve what they were born into, obviously. Yeah. Obviously, they were born to this family because they're supposed to, they're supposed to rule the world, right? Those are the <laughs> fucking morons that we're dealing with now. They don't know you their know, ass from a hole fair, in the ground. When... When we think of uh, Dickensian society and, you know, of course, I'm referring to A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. You know, it was the fuck aroundest of times. It was the find outest of times. Um, <laughs> it really is Dickensian in the United States. And it always has been. There has always been pockets of Richistan, little exclaves of gated community privilege interspersed third world banana republic where the police have free license to kill and rape and steal and uh, the poor are by and large every year more and more incarcerated and under surveillance and probation I mean it's it just continues to grow more and more dystopian for the lower caste, whereas the higher caste has never been more detached from the reality of what everyone else already lives in. They, I mean, they, they have no idea uh, what a what a fifty three foot or a forty eight foot trailer is like. They they don't have them. Don't even know what the fuck a dry dock is, or a skid steer, or a pallets, or I mean. I, I, Ne never have gone hunting or fishing can't identify any trees i mean they're i mean the professional managerial class is the least able to survive any hardship i mean i, I think back to the great depression and all of the bankers and rich people jumping out of windows because their entire world view and zeitgeist and how they perceive reality is just completely and totally shattered 
when the fantasy of Richistan disappears and they realize they're in the same fucking country we are. And it's spelled M-U-R-R-K-A. Murka. Murka, you know, and because it'll murk fuck you. around, find out, get you some murk, get murk and murka. I mean, it's the story of America from beginning to end is written in blood and defined by death. And that's what America means when people in other countries find something that actually has the magic words written on the side of the bombshell fragment made in the United States. Because that's what we make. We make bombs and bullets, and we'll sell them to anyone. Well, if the Biden administration has their way in shutting down the ammo factory in St. Louis. No, um, no, because they just did a deal with India where we're sending uh, $4 billion worth of armaments over there for them to well, use. Well, the point being, we'll sell guns and arms to anyone, but we don't want to sell them to Americans anymore. Yeah, they don't American want American citizens, right? Armed. Right, yeah. right. But anybody else? It's 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 the right. only. I, I mean, in my personal opinion, and I could be wrong, but it's the only thing propping up the whole illusion of freedom and their their fake democracy, even though we live in a republic. <laughs> but the, the the whole idea of democracy is disgusting to probably all of us here who are listening to this. But the uh, the illusion of it keeps people going to work and, you know, support their favorite sports team or whatever celebrity that they're following and dumb shit to make their life make sense to them. Well, I, I, I refer to the term domesticated human pet slave that you, you kill the Indian and save the man. You tame the human from being a living, connected, natural creature living on this earth, cohabitating with all life, living from life, not needing money to live, and turn them into a completely and totally enslaved pet so that everything that you do all day long, every day, is constantly making other people money, not you, when you go to buy your tires when you go to buy your gas, when you go to pay your toll at the toll booth. There's just toll booths everywhere, all day long, all week long, all the bills, everything you pay. It's so that other people get to make money off of your sweat to the point of chattel slavery, the so-called minimum wage, which for those that know, if you serve meals or if you're a waiter or waitress or restaurant worker, you don't even get to seven dollars an hour, buddy. Oh hell no! It's it's like three dollars and eighty five cents an hour. Is my minimum. Three dollars and eighty five cents. Table. Shit! I was only getting two dollars an hour when I was waiting tables. I mean, and I so mean, I was making two, three, four hundred dollars a shift. But I, I was the guy in the back of the house making sure the food came out on time. So you people in the front oh, of the fuck house, fuck yeah, I loved you, man. Oh yeah, with, with the front of the house looks got you know the pr- appropriate tips because their food came out on time. That's right. And the good servers in the restaurant you worked in would tip you out at the re- at the end of the night. Yeah. yeah. There are some restaurants like, um, <clears throat> I don't want to really name them by name, Darden Restaurants or um, Olive Garden and Red Lobster. But anyways, um, you know, when I was waiting there, uh, working FOH and BOH, um, in front of the house and back of the house, um, waiting and cooking and dishwashing and all that stuff, um, the managers were the only ones who were allowed to collect tips off the tables and they would pull the tips and divide them up at the end of the night so that they didn't have to make up the difference to anyone on the clock that wasn't making minimum wage in West Virginia. Some of you guys uh, should have been uh, saran wrapping their cars while they were counting out their tips. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, and that there were so many waiters that would quit after a couple days of well, having no their shit. tips stolen by management. Cause you know, I think yeah, that might even that. be illegal, but, uh, and then, you know, you look at the tickets for the people that are dining in at red lobster, for example, 
I don't want to name them by name, but Red Lobster. Um, you know, eighty, ninety dollars for just a, a party of two, and they're thinking that all this stuff is gourmet cooked in the back, and most of it is like frozen. Think like Swanson or Stouffer's type. You know, literally have a a, a weird looking fork type utensil that you can just slap it with three or four times to poke holes in the cellophane so that you can put it in the microwave faster. And then from the microwave, you've just got this little tab that you pull on one side so that you can pour it out of one corner onto the plate to make it look like it was cooked in a skillet and I could charge not, people 50 bucks I for a plate of fucking working microwave in a red frozen kitchen. pasta. God damn, could you imagine that smell? Trying to get that smell off of you at the end of the day? Well, the Ugh. worst thing is when you have to take the mud veins out of the jumbo shrimp, because that's literally the poop shoot of some crustaceans. Oh, oh, and having to kill the live lobsters. I actually got pinched where one of them broke the fucking rubber bands, because, you know, they have rubber bands on the pin. Cause they, the, those things work. Oh, yeah. Shh. <laughs> Biscotti said he made three dollars an hour as a waiter. <laughs> must be nice. Yeah, must have been real nice. I never got paid that much as a waiter. Hey, Biscotti, I'm still waiting on my refill, buddy. It's taking so damn long. I don't give a fuck about your other six tables. I'm the table that matters. That's right. So did you uh, happen to catch the uh, the segment at the bottom of the last hour, Yona? Were you on that early? I was listening to some of the stuff here. I heard a couple songs. Uh, I don't know if I caught the segment because I was gigging live until about 9.30. Oh, wow. <laughs> you basically jumped off, right off of stage and came to join us. Yeah, yeah, That's I literally awesome. ran off stage, hopped in the van, drove across the bridge, came in to my room and logged on and then had to run back out and kiss the kids goodnight for bed and then come back. Well, it turns out, and maybe maybe you heard this uh, today sometime earlier, maybe you didn't, but it turns out that after a decade of studying the effects of, what is it they... They, they give it very specific nomenclature. Uh, radio frequency radiation. After a decade of studying the oh. health effects of radio frequency radiation on, you know, they, they think on people, but they're testing on animals. Mm -hmm. uh, the NIH has deci decided that even though uh, they found evidence of cancer, heart damage, and DNA damage, uh, they don't need to study it anymore. They're good. Oh, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. hell, I need to go out and get me some new Bluetooths for my ears. Then we're yeah. good. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I was just talking about that earlier, man. That 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 news is just in time. Perfect. Wow. I'm so, going Bluetooth everything. Fuck it. No more cords. Yeah, so last week you lost informed consent, and uh, this week they can start blasting you with microwaves. Did you know that every single <laughs> cell phone says, in the fine print, every single cell phone says, don't ever hold it any closer than six inches to your skin? And how many people I mean, hold a I'm cell phone up to their ear? I don't know. Well, I mean, I you have, I in order to hold it in your hand, it has to be within six inches. Otherwise, you can't hold it. I, I don't know about you guys, but I've never been able to hold the phone to my head to take a call for more than a minute without feeling that side of my head start having a kind of feeling. Like I've always been either some kind of connection outside of the phone or speaker. Some people are more sensitive to it as well. Mm. That's a fact. I oh, think I'm, I'm I think I'm sensitive. Like if I have it in my pocket for more than five minutes, I feel it. And it's oh. like I gotta take it out and keep it away from me. Do you buy cheap phones, Rob? Nah. I mean I got the iPhone 14 currently, so okay. right. whatever that's worth. <laughs> 
But no, those are expensive. I've, I'm sure I've they're still one, expensive. I've had ones in the past, like the uh, Motorola Q phone back in the early days. Like that was one of the most radiation um, emitting phones that there was. And even at that point, there wasn't a lot of Bluetooth. There wasn't even really Bluetooth at that, unless you had something better than that. And I couldn't keep that near my head. What what's kind of um, intimidating, you know, almost well scary, really to me is, uh, you know, sometimes I'll get a message from my phone, Wi-Fi network available or whatever, and just for shits and giggles, I'll hit to see, you know, what what are we? What do you mean Wi-Fi networks and? blam like 20 or 30 different fucking wi-fi signals that are all three or four bars will immediately display in this little window on my phone and i'm like jesus christ are they ever going to get 5g up here can't we get more of this we need more of this more signals please then i won't get cold in the winter time my brain will always be frying like an egg on drugs Yeah, that's right. I have, uh, I have Verizon Fios, and they had 5G within the house before it was widely available in like the Philadelphia area, which is the closest city to me. Fuck yeah. I got 5G now, Verizon. Can you fear me now? Can you fear me now? All right. Verizon tells me I have 5G, but I don't believe it. Not out here in Jasper. There's no Exactly. fucking way they put a 5G tower out here. Are you kidding me? I, I remember when 3G was the prevalent one and like I think AT&T was the first one with 4G and guys I worked with No, had they the weren't. 4G. They were And lying. AT&T was fucking lying. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. They didn't have 4G. that's I don't know if I've ever discussed this with you guys, but what my phone showed at least. there's an article that I read, um, and then I talked to one of my friends that's a tower climber, because I've done, in my career, I think about 15 different cell phone tower surveys where I'll go out and do topographic survey um you know uh, and maybe get geotech out there to do a couple of uh soil core samples to figure out you know how deep to bedrock um, what type of rock you know you know for for building cell phone towers and then eventually you get the tower jockeys out there that climb up and down those towers and do all the hard work at the top of the fucking tower that's 300 500 foot tall it's 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 fucking outrageous even even the 200 foot tall towers you know and they've got cranes and everything else that's suspending the different dishes and units that they're then up there bolting on and 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 the article that i read was that the single most dangerous occupation in the united states is um tower climbers that work uh, as, of course, independent contractors. Uh, and, like, several hundred every year are just falling to their deaths from harnesses breaking or losing footing or not properly trained. I mean, uh, and, and so, you know, when we talk about um, wireless connectivity, you know, through cell phone signal, first thing I think of is, you know, Literally every day, there's at least three or four Americans that are falling to their death from a fucking cell phone trying to fix a fucking cell phone tower. Well, the, well, to, to make you feel better, the five G towers are like basically at like less than skyscraper level, like two story level, and all the trees that are around, or that are facing that te that uh, transmission, are all fucking dead. <laughs> Well, because 5G is a completely different mode of signal transmission from Yeah. 1 through 4G. 1 through 4G 4, was 4G a was typical a lot further type radio transmission. transmission. Think of Yep, dropping yep. a rock into the middle of a lake, and there's a signal that pulses out like circles in all directions radially from this one source sending out signal. And it's going in all directions, radially. That's 1G through 4G. 
5G, on the other hand, is like a fucking fire hose that you turn and point and aim towards someone, and then your buddy then cranks the top of the fucking fire hydrant, and blam! You're blasted with a directed vectored signal. Yeah. It's vectored signaling, vectored transmission. Like you're literally being hit with the radio form of Jewish space laser. But it's a directed vector. The signal is being aimed toward you. It's not just a signal being broadcast in 360 degrees on pulses. I, I'm personally Instead, this is a continuous beam that's continuously aimed at you. Um, and so 5G is just going to take um, cellular damage and genetic damage and cancer to a whole new, more awesome turbo level of cancer. Well, we already have turbo cancer, though. Like, what? What is this going to be like? The the turbo and the supercharger together? Hyper turbo. It's Hyper turbo? extreme, extreme turbo cancer. Nobody, yeah. nobody can quite fathom what could have possibly changed it. Nothing at all has changed except one variable. But since well, that yeah, variable COVID. is on the table, we can't even consider that. I, I I know personally uh, nobody who died from actual COVID, but I know a lot of people who've suffered from the consequences of the solution. So it's <laughs> it, it's comical to me. I live in a pretty highly populated area, and I've probably in my circle of people known at least ten people who have had some kind of bad reaction to experiments. Wow, whereas, that's high. Whereas I know nobody that I've personally ever met that died of COVID. I've actually been seeing some of the like bizarre side effects because uh, I'm in an HR position now and I've got a whole bunch of employees <clears throat> and uh, this young guy working for us just as a temp is recently back as August, you know, young, moving around in the paint shop, waving a paint wand. Um, in the past two months, he's coming in with a cane. He's coming in with a brace on his arm. His just a temp. So the supervisor's emailing me like, hey, maybe we should cut this temp loose. I don't, you know, I don't want him to get hurt in the job. So I got to reach out to his agent, find out what's going on. He's coming through and setting, letting me know like, oh, no, it's not. I didn't hurt myself over the weekend. I didn't hurt myself on the job. I've got this bizarre genetic disorder. I'm trying to figure it out, man. I'm just dealing with it myself. I have no idea what's going on. I've got inflammation in my hip, inflammation in my elbow. The doctors don't know. Like one day, it, one day I can't walk. The next day I can't turn my hand. I'm really sorry, Daniel. Everything will be fine. I'm getting this worked out. He gives me his paperwork from his doctor and it lists all his vaccines. And he got quadruple, quadruple japped. I don't know what to say about oh. the kid. The kid's oh. like 24 years old and, you know, it lists like starting from his young age, all the MDAP T PAPs that you get as a kid, all the shots through high school. Dude got the HPV times four, so like probably oh. once each year in high school, wow. once each year in high school. So this is what it means oh to be twenty three. And as okay, then the flu vaccine each year. It looked like he got the flu shot each year since he finished high school, so probably six years or something like that. And then when it came to COVID, he got the Moderna, then he got the booster, and then I think he got like the booster on top of that. And so like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh, I know exactly what's happening. His immune system is, is at war with him. And, uh, you know, it's, Oh my God. I'm, I'm picturing this poor temp guy with yeah, his braces he's... and everything. And, and the only image that comes to mind is pinhead from Hellraiser. Like oh my imagine if, if every single shot that he ever got from a syringe, if he could like get like yeah, visually see it and yeah. tape, all of those syringes to his body, you know, where every single one went in, you know, just to have a I think I have that meme the, somewhere of the 88 different needles. Yeah, you do. Hanging. Yeah, yeah yes, you do. That, that's it, yeah. the, I'm thinking of the drizzle meme. King yeah. of the memes. No one has better memes than drizzle. S sadly, I, I just <laughs> all, all the people that I know who have gotten it and got the second one and the booster they, they're constantly sick oh There's yeah like a stomach 
or like a flu kind of thing that had some ever since that whole nonsense that went on. Oh, wait, I do have a native advertising line I'm supposed to read here now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, ladies and gentlemen, ask your doctor about iatricide by Pfizer and if cremation is right for you. Okay, back to you guys. Well, Thanks, I, Yuna. I appreciate you shilling for us, Yuna. <laughs> iatricide. Iatricide. Brand new product. Look it up. That's I A T R O. C I D E I atrocide. Yeah, I think I we Pfizer. covered that on a previous episode. Side of effects Get Facts may Harder. apply. Yeah. I, I personally think that should be like a ploy of the independent media is to seek out that ad revenue. Like it, you, you can pretend like it's shilling or anything else, <laughs> but when everything that you say is counter to that shit, if you can get their money, fuck them. Like. <laughs> Well, I think that's why they were trying to leverage uh, podcast networks. I think that was like the whole thing is they wanted they wanted for those corporations to be able to give the money to the independent producers so that then the enforcers could come behind and be like, all right, you got to stop talking about this now because you took the money. Well, listen, Drizzle, we don't have to take that Pfizer money. It's much easier to take I don't want their money, money and, and shill for Israel. The only money There's that I want money. is from people who find value in the media that we produce. That's the only money that I want. And I want all of that money. And I do believe there are links in the show notes for the donationally inclined. Manufacturingreality.org forward slash provide hyphen value. Provide value. That's right, folks. There it is. And maybe you're looking for oh, some new uh, threads. Maybe you need some of that autonomized drip that only GT dubs be rocking. And for your merch, check out the media warehouse. Or no. Speaking of threads, that's a nice blue shirt you got there, Yona. Well, you know, I, I had to look nice playing on the, on the fancy grand piano, yeah. you know. Yeah, we can't see your face, though. <laughs> oh yeah looks like some kind of micro oh, the cameras on the laptop. material to me but i'm a little critical i got a great I, I thought you had a, I got, a gray, to, uh... I got a gray version of that shirt for when i'm selling out that's all i'm saying well where's the the link for uh the grand theft world liberty radio t-shirt oh that's uh right there uh in the the menu bar at the top of the website uh it says oh, okay. uh, liberty that's radio right. boutique Right there at manufacturingreality.org. All right. So, so Yona, how how do we get you uh, moved into New Hampshire for Pork Fest in June? Oh, I'm 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 going to find a way there because I'm going to I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. You got to play a DJ set there. No shit. No shit. That 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 will happen. Imagine. I'll have. Oh, I'll imagine have an if you had been there last year, dude. You could have done a set. With uh, Bobby the K doing push-ups during your set, Fuck yeah, yeah, Fuck that would have yeah. been hot, bro. <laughs> I, I was, bro. I, was, I, I would love I to. I, you know, I'll definitely take my keyboard because I probably end up doing a duet with Jordan Peterson or some of those other guys that are musicians. You know, or maybe Jordan Page. He's Page. a better one, actually. Either one. Yeah. Either Jordan one. Jordan Page is likely to be there. He's been there the last two years when I've been there. Jordan Peterson, on the other hand, I, I don't know. But I, I mean, I, I have a tendency to um, go Pork to. Pork Fest is a stone's throw from the Canadian border. And so I figured I could do Pork Fest and then also uh, do a Grand Theft World Liberty Radio uh, video thing like we've done a couple times now, Drizzle and I, because um, I want to go visit. Um, Lac Magantique, where the first bomb train exploded and wiped out about six city blocks. And it's wow. pretty bad. I don't know if you ever heard of that train disaster in Canada, up in uh, Quebec, where they speak the Cajun Frenchie. Um, you, you got a uh, stop off in southern New Jersey, 30 minutes south of Philadelphia, if you uh, want to make your journey from West Virginia. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at how to get up there, and um, 
if I came to New Jersey, that would be a special trip and diversion from the route that I had planned. I was just going to run the top of the Appalachian Ridge from West Virginia all the way there. Sure, that would be quicker, but it wouldn't be as interesting. Uh, well, it wasn't really the quicker way because I wasn't taking the interstate. I mean, I, I'm known as High Yona because of the constant weed smoking, and so I normally take what I characterize as stoner routes when I travel. Uh, because the other issue is, ever since the Kufi Festival, when we all got to shelter in place and start to get a taste of the 15-minute meta-type life, um, you know, I, just stay in I, your cage. I, I stay in your cage. I personally refused it, but... <laughs> and, you know... Uh, I couldn't imagine staying in my cage. I mean, I, my God, last year I went through so many gallons of fuel. I covered so many fucking miles last year. So, yeah, stopping by and saying hi in Jersey between fucking New Hampshire and West Virginia is no big deal. I mean, I was looking at taking, like, Route 15 and because I was going to cut over through Cumberland down the old Braddock's Road on – Got to hit Route 80. 50 and then take 15 up past uh, Fort Detrick and Raven Rock and all those juicy places. But I mean, if, if you're going for like quickest route, 81 from your area, bounce on 81, you can go way up to New York City. Or not New ooh, York, New York State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I avoid Interstate 81 like, <laughs> like the bubonic plague because from. I grew up the on Maryland Indiana. state line all the way down to fucking Bristol, Virginia. It's just a four lane interstate with enough traffic for it's eight lanes. Six lanes in some places and larger in the cities. I mean, they I, only they only I did, did that for Virginia portion. Tech and Blacksburg. The That's rest not of true. it is shit. That's not true I, I, because when you I get to large... uh, Harrisonburg. It opens oh, up to yeah. like eight lanes or something. Yeah, for those three exits. Yeah. yeah. Once I got past DC, I took it for a large portion of my trip to Alabama. To um, what the hell was the city? God damn. Well, yeah, because you can hit eighty one and then seventy five at Knoxville, and bam, you're right there in Alabama, right there by Huntsville, before you hit Chattanooga. Well, yeah, yeah, because you cut right through Chattanooga. Right into Alabama. That was when I took that trip. It was way before Google was telling me how to get there. It was like you had to like look at a map and like circle the fucking routes you wanted to take for the most direct way to go somewhere. And do you do any of you guys? Do you or Daniel or Driz or Rob? Uh, any of you guys remember uh, American Automobile Association AAA yeah, Motor I Club AAA. going in there and getting a trip tick customized navigation map little booklet made for you so you can go on I, your family I, I never got that but i got to do the uh, mid-atlantic coast server replacement for AAA as a consultant back like fucking almost 18 years ago i had to drive from new jersey and hit every AAA location in the mid-atlantic region down to uh the hell was it? It was like what somewhere in Virginia, but in like the most western part. Ooh, that sounds like wise. <laughs> Bland County. <laughs> Nation's Corner area. Yeah. Sounds about right. Uh, pretty much down by Bristol. The, the, the yeah. company I was working for gave me this shitty minivan that like I couldn't leave it running. Like most of most of the like locations I'd go into. I mean, I'm pretty good at the shit I do. So I go in, I take the new like hardware in, fucking swap out the cables, make sure everything was good, bounce out of there within like 15 minutes. And like three, yeah. three quarters of the way through my trip, the van I was driving wasn't like the, the starter wasn't like hitting every time. So I I was like at the point where like I gotta leave this shit running. I gotta run into the location, swap the shit out while the the serve like the car's running, and I had the shit overheat on me, <laughs> and ended up getting like stuck for a night staying down there in like Tyson's Corner. Ooh, oh, yeah. Well, if you're gonna ooh get stuck Nova, somewhere. oh yeah. now we're talking real action here. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Don't let the Beltway get in the way. <laughs> oh, talk about fun in the sun. And that's where the pickle factory is too, boys. That's right. 
you can have a night uh, out on the city that isn't actually a city. Well, that that was the greatest part about being a consultant. Like you go out, like you stay at a hotel, the company pays for it. You go out to dinner, they pay for it. And, you know, depending on how you work, you could slide in all kinds of shit that, you know, isn't really necessary as part of your travel. Oh, yeah. We would always do that. I mean, if, if that wasn't the case, there wouldn't be male entertainment establishments. Come Correct. on. <laughs> I mean, why do you think Americans are signing up to go to the show in the Middle East? Because they want to see some Gaza strippers. Come on now. Take plenty of dollars. <laughs> yeah, the strippers. Singles and fives. Singles and fives. I mean, we're talking Rafa strippers, not Ramallah. You know, don't get it twisted. It's not West Bank. Thank God. I mean, we don't want twelve year old strippers. I don't I don't recall No, actually I take that back. I was gonna say I didn't see anything about Israel today on social media, but I, I remembered I did. But, it was, before, but it was mostly Apple goggles. It was like Apple goggles, dead Palestinian kid, Apple goggles, Apple goggles, Apple goggles. You know, before this current genocide, did any of you guys see Israel's power in the world as being that? Like that, that, that's been the representation of it since I was probably in my mid 20s and I'm 51 now that they were uh, pretty much calling the show on everything that you see in the media. And oh, it's just, well, yeah, because they it, it, run I mean, the intelligence networks. Like Israel's is calling the shots when it comes to intelligence. Yeah. I myself, I have a musical repertoire now of well over 600 songs, but the vast majority of which I wrote or composed or recorded or whatever just within the last two and a half years. It's just been an absolute frenzy. <laughs> the only person I know that really keeps up with me on that level is, would be Dead Fella. And of course, we were, we were collaborating constantly. Um, but when you go back to like my, my first 30 songs that I ever wrote, going back to the first song I wrote was in 1982. 82? <laughs> 1982, when I was just uh, eight years old. But um, I was nine, so I'm, I'm with you. And, and you know, that, that song was Jericho, and it was talking about. Uh, you know, kids not being able to play at the playground on the other side of the fence because they could they weren't allowed through the fence and they couldn't go through the checkpoint. I mean, so yes, I mean, my entire life on earth, I have always seen the Zionist as genocidal supremacist maniacs. And um, funny thing, it turns out they actually are genocidal supremacist maniacs. We are God's only chosen people. The rest of you are cursed. I mean, it's basically what you're saying. I mean, the Cherokee view of humanity is rather different. You know, we call ourselves principled people. And and our word for foreigners or strangers is young we or relatives. You know, I mean, take compare that to like... Uh, Nihongo gare, you know, uh, 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 Japanese. In, in Nihongo or Japanese, their term for a foreigner is gaijin, which literally means like uh, alien or um, it, it's a very pejorative term. I thought it was like invader or something. Yeah. Um, but but, but it, 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 it's one of those special Japanese characters that always has poop on it. it it's very pejorative. It, you, you never see the O in, in front of it, you know. It's it's not like oh, osumu tai, right? Uh, oh, taimu, oh, oh, taimu osu, um, which is Japanese for smoke more the weeds, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Got to keep it international, right? Shit, how, mas, many, mas how many languages did Uncle Sam make you learn? Uh, during my time in service, I studied um, Poluski, Polska, and uh, Lugal uh, So uh, Russian, Polish, and Arabic. Because I was studying 
my assigned language was modern standard Arabic with a uh, Syrian dialect. And so the dialect that I studied for is the uh, uh, Derazaur or the Tomf dialect, which unironically uh, is uh, the best part of Syria. That's why America is occupying that part. It's got all the wheat and the oil fields and stuff. Oh, hey, all thanks, the good guys. stuff, yeah. Good luck. I, I, good luck I, prefer, there. I prefer if you learn Sanskrit so you can tell us like some of the ancient knowledge. Now, that's funny. That's something that I'm working on as we speak with Dead Fella. Um, there's two songs that we've already done together about Encore Watt. Um, both of them actually are Grand Theft World songs. In fact, uh, played one of them for uh, Richard at the last town hall. The one, uh, well, it's called Lisa's Rich Remix. <laughs> Shout <laughs> them both out. Uh, it's called Re-Energize, hmm. Autonomize, Win Grand Theft World Prize. Uh, but the beginning of that video, the guy is explaining the stone relief on the stele at Encore Watt and about the uh, holy drink that you have to uh, swallow down when you get to the gates of heaven that's called Soma, S-O-M-A, Soma, and you drink your Soma to completely wipe your memory clean of everything that happened in your life on earth. Um, so, um, oh, so a Huxley. Yeah. And, and, but, but I mean, that's a story from Angkor Wat that Aldous Huxley borrowed into his brave new what? world. What, what so, are you saying? Aldous stole that idea from somebody else that it wasn't his originally, that he wasn't some sort of literary genius. Is that what you're saying? Yona? Well, he didn't steal it. I don't know if he gives credit to it or not. I don't think that's really necessary. I don't Joe think Biden. he gives credit to shit. I, mean, I think he tries to claim everything for himself. At least that was my impression of it, of reading his work. Well, to be fair, Fabians are not known for their humility anyway. I mean, you know, if you're wearing sheep's clothing and you already have a coat of wolf's fur, it's kind of redundant, isn't it? Who are you fooling? Anyway, uh, uh, and sadly, they're fooling a lot. And the people that they're fooling is in the professional managerial class. And so, I mean, uh, if, like, God forbid, God forbid, if there actually was a class war of the professional managerial class having to uh, swing um, silicon dildos against uh the working class and the poor. Um, oh, it'd not be over be in much a day. Of a war. It'll it, it'll be over in less than a day. When you know, as soon as the charge runs out on their golf cart, they're fucked. And the rednecks around here, they all burn gas in like four wheel drive. You know, side by side. I think that was ATVs kind of the whole point motorbikes. of the managerial class from the beginning, right? It was to to create this. Uh, separation zone between the the power controllers and everybody else essentially yeah so that you just make it softer and softer and softer over time so that eventually it just like goes away and you're just left with the two i mean i would love to see some type of scenario that at least puts enough fear into the ruling class that they actually go and descend into their brand new bunkers and eat bunker food for at least three or four days until they just Could you come out of the hole like and fly on a private jet straight to France. In like the top 25 the metropolitan areas just going to town all at the same time. God, that'd be <laughs> glorious. I wonder what the wait time is now in San Francisco for a U-Haul truck. And apparently know. they're all parked in Texas. <laughs> uh, but this is the perfect time to remind everyone that Liberty Radio is for entertainment purposes only. Mm -hmm. Muy bueno el café. So what else is on your minds collectively this evening? 
not collectively as in communists, but collectively as in everyone assembled here tonight. I find that I'm having more fun with rap than all the other styles of music right now. And I'm combining rap and techno with anything else I can find. And it's usually the reason why I will remix a certain track is because I've never heard anybody else remix Laotian or Vietnamese or Cambodian or, you know. I got so, some, okay, some, I'll be the first. Okay. Some French rap, some French rap or some Japanese rap. There's some really interesting like Brazilian, French and Japanese rap I've heard in skateboarding videos. Yeah. And they've got some really fresh styles in Brazilian, French, Japanese yeah, rap. I mean, that would cross that's the thing nice. about it. You know, to me, the language is not a barrier. And so the lang- I don't have any prejudice per se when it comes to mixing as to what language I mix into the music. I give no fucks about it. I mean, hell, I, I remixed Carol Quickly, university presser from Georgetown, right? Author of Tragedy and Hope and uh, Evolution of Civilization and so many other great works and so central to the Grand Theft Auto community. And he's remixed with um, uh, Sudanese and Eritrean, Eritrean, Eritrea, Eritrea. Boy, that that's a rough one there. Um, anyway, yeah, you got it. You got you nailed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Eritrean and, and Sudanese. I mean, the guy. There's one part of Tragedy and Hope, the song, um, where they're, they're talking about da ba 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 da Darfur, ba 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 da Sudan. Yeah, you know, I mean, you can hear Darfur, Darfur, Sudan, Sudan, and so you kind of kind of can figure out. Ah, uh, th- this is clip. Well, it's it's obviously african i mean to me there there are certain sounds if you hear a bunch of ski 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 yeah you know it's some type of slavic action going on when you hear the l and the loud sounds like someone's gurgling with a mouthful of fresh snowball don't look up what the other definition of snowball is if you don't know don't look it up right now but that's french or portuguese and, of course, we all know the sound of Spanish because, uh, I mean, who hasn't shopped at uh, Home Depot? Am I right? And they're right there by the door every morning. Every morning. Every morning. And more every day now. More every day. Oh, did, you know, we, ever, did we ever civil war? Is that, did we start well, that, that, that That's what we're building to. That's what's going to get the rich to have to I thought, suffer out three or four wait, days but I of thought, bunker wasn't, food. Wasn't there like a, a convoy of like carpenters and uh, bakers and pizza delivery men were like all going to the border to, to civil war? I don't know. When, when oh. is that supposed to happen? Oh, wow. When the uh, the unicorn dances on the fucking moonlight, I, I I don't know. When NASA tells the truth, <laughs> I would love to see some hand to hand class warfare combat with nothing but silicon dildos. Hmm. I That'd mean, that's interesting. A, there's a group of people still thinking that the world's flat. So oh, no. No, you got silicone dildos on one side and flashlights on the other. Yes. Then they battle it out. And that way they can battle at night. Oh, my God. Night battle, flashlights versus slow dildos. Oh, my God. What about the flat earthers? I mean, we got to fit them in somewhere. You guys are being stingy. Hey, observe the skyline behind my head. I live right on the razor's edge of the flat earth where you can tell the birds aren't fake. <laughs> and I mean, the sun is fake too I mean, it doesn't that, move on that know. note about the uh, immigration and uh, move to push everyone into a civil war state with one vice one side of the vice versus the other side of the vice has anyone seen the recent series from Andrew Callahan channel 5 uh, viewer supported news right he's been down in Arizona Texas border he's actually got a video up right now where he's crossing the border back illegally but what he's kind of uncovered down there is very interesting. Like when I watched it through, it seems like uh, 
Republican governor of Texas is playing along this game uh-huh. and he's not he's not actively trying, you know, is <clears throat> the Republicans who support him and think he's trying to help off the border. He's the one shipping in the buses to every single part of the country he can. And they follow one of these buses and it goes on to Indian reservation. And as soon as they're on the reservation, they get stopped by tribal police and orders to turn their cameras off. And so it looks like the government's using reservations to to funnel these buses so they yep. can get cut off and no one can follow them the rest of the way. But really interesting journalism. He's out there interviewing these people. He speaks Spanish. So some of these folks, he's getting to communicate right away. But other people are like from Bangladesh or from crazy parts of Africa. And yep. this one guy tells this whole story of how he got from Africa to Europe, from Europe to South America, from South America through Central America. He names every city and then he names all the prices he had to pay for each leg of the journey. It's freaking fascinating. Wow. But, you know, to me, it's so obvious what is taking place. And that is the United States itself, you can think of as one massive plantation. And the hardest worked and most exploited workers in the United States now, all across the service industries and hard labor, uh, we've seen you know roofing, fruit picking, any work with backer. I'm sorry, tobacco. Um, you know whether you're cutting backer, hanging backer, whatever. Uh, that's already been replaced by immigrant labor, by undocumented workers for some 25, 30 years around. Kentucky and West Virginia and Ohio in this area. Oh, but pig farms. more more particularly, it's intensifying now that they're sending undocumented workers to every single labor market in the United States to now just completely replace what few jobs are even still left in the United States. And that's going to be McDonald's and Walmart and the gas stations. And it's already happened in some places, but we're now going to see that within the next 18 months that it's going to become pretty much impossible to get a traditional job as more and more and more and more Americans are pushed into doing odds and ends and contracting and, um, or gig work, you know, gig work, yeah. working off cell phone apps, uh, you know, yeah. Fiber um, and that kind of shit. And, and the reason being it's the employers, that sustain and are making illegal immigration worse when they drive the gooseneck trailer down there and load up another roofing crew or backer crew or whatever. And, and all the officials and, you know, they get up to the roadblock on the 277 at Falfurious and they're just let right through um, with their gooseneck plumb full because undocumented workers are the best fucking workers to have. They'll have taxes taken out everywhere they go to buy anything, but they don't have any rights. And if they don't like being raped or abused or whatever the fuck happens to them, they can just get deported and sent back. Fuck you. And then for the rich and well-to-do or for the skilled workers, Well, they can get an H-1B visa and go take some Birkenstock-wearing motherfucker's job that was making 85 grand because he's fucking Microsoft certified in five forms of fucking digital yoga, and he gets replaced by Apu, good luck with his last name, at a 30,000-year annual salary doing the same fucking thing in Cupertino, California. Go Apple. Nahaja, not going to work here anymore. (laughs) <laughs> I, I I have a slightly different perspective on that because I am an IT worker. I've been doing it for like 25 years. And believe me, if they could replace me for half my you know salary, they they would do it. But they can't. You, you know, the, the the skill that you build up is way superior to some third world countries teaching people and my industry is flooded with people from the third world and there's a lot of people who've lost their jobs and had the indignity of having to train their fucking replacement along the way but that's on you as far as i'm concerned like if you don't like keep at the top of your fucking game and you're lazy and you're just 
you know, getting by, earning a fucking paycheck, mm -hmm. you can easily be replaced. But if you increase your skills, like I personally have over my fucking career, like they can't replace me. They, I mean, they, you know, w when they, you've mastered your skill set and you provide an invaluable public service, you don't even ever have to even advertise. Nope. You don't even have to have your number in the phone book. No, because uh, word gets around and it gets around quick. Yeah, I mean, I, I never advertised ever as a land surveyor. And uh, because, you know, people would find me. Most of the surveys that I got, people were recommended to me by other surveyors. My, my, they, my they would point. say, I can't do that kind of survey. You're going to yeah. need Anselmo to do that. And so oh. they would call Anselmo. They would call me. My, my, my point being, if your skill level is the equivalent of someone who doesn't speak the language of the country that they're coming in, and they can take whatever shitty fucking job that you're working, you're not really living up to your potential. You, right. you need to strive for something a little more. Well, now, when it comes to that, there are so many people in the U.S. workforce today that are working in jobs that obviously are not up to their potential, but there just ain't really that many good jobs to be found in most of the territory of the United States. There's only a few larger cities and areas that have job markets that will really provide for the type of job that a lot of people have an education for. So as a result, it's all kinds of college graduates and people working and paying off college loans, maybe that had some college but did not graduate, and they're working at Walmart or McDonald's or wherever they can work because the bills keep coming and the good jobs ain't. And the bills keep coming and you got to make money somehow. And so you have to go and work some fucking job. I mean, you know, myself doing DoorDash and Uber, obviously I should probably be a professor at some university. But that that's not going to happen in well, the United States. Uh, I'm glad we finally hit on this particular theme this evening because there's something that's been sticking in my mind the past couple of days that I haven't been able to come up with a good enough answer yet in order to make it go away. Uh, maybe you guys heard this week that uh, one of what was essentially an institution throughout the course of my life, Sports Illustrated is basically done. Closing their doors, going away, will be no more. No. Oh. Yeah. Not I was even, just talking division? about Sports Nothing. Illustrated the other day, Drizzle. Nothing. What the fuck? Yeah. That's going to be a hot item now in collectibles as back issues of Sports Illustrated because that was like that oh, was like yeah. the front page of sports. That was the front page of sports every month. Well, I mean, yeah, hell of a business model, right? But why now? Why now? They, they kind of got caught with their hand in the cookie jar because they were using... Um, underdeveloped AI to write all their articles and they got exposed. I think that was the reason that they kind of lost their credibility and went under. I mean, am I mistaken in that? I, I don't know. I don't know what the reason they decided to close was. Yeah. I just think it's, it's kind of, you know, they were one of those publications that however it was that it happened managed to survive the digital revolution. Right? Yeah. They embraced I, it. SI.com. I mean, they were, I, I'm, I'm really shocked. And furthermore, to be, to be was, fair, yeah. it's, it's not called sports annotated. It's called sports illustrated. And everyone went to sports illustrated for the <laughs> pictures, not I, really I, for the articles, but it, the granted, you know, the fact that the articles are written by, yeah, that that's a stain that, yeah. I don't know, it's apparently a torpedo that sunk the fucking battleship. Shout out B1. Pretty much, because that's what I had saw. Like, doing IT work, I see the daily news every day in the normie mainstream media propaganda mill, but that was something I had saw right before they were going under, was that they got exposed 
as having most of their articles written by AI. And then there was like a mini outrage amongst writers. And then all of a sudden they're going under like two weeks, a month later. I mean, you know, I could give you a better example. Like think Bob Guccione with Penthouse, right? If, if you found out that the regular Penthouse magazine, that the articles in it were AI written, who gives a fuck? It's about the pictures. But if you find out that the Penthouse letters yeah, magazine you don't mess that you with got the house letters man and you know there there there's there might be one pictorial in there but the rest is 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 beautiful harlequin literature prose man it's prose i mean it, it's prose i mean it, I, I've, I've never seen burbs so vigorously conjugated in my entire life it, it, I, I when i was in grade school i got me some penthouse letters I actually was diagramming some of those sentences on graph paper because um, it's what geeks and nerds do. Anyways, um, oh, no. if I found out that those penthouse letters were AI written, I would burn them. They, they I would were, feel so they, defiled that, that I, 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 I masturbated I, to a computer's imagination. I, I hate I, to, I, that's so wrong. I, I hate to go even worse than that, Yona, but they were written by gay guys. Like that, that was before AI. The gay men wrote fantasies for you in uh, heterosexual magazines. Gay guy is the prequel to <laughs> AI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just blew my fucking mind, Rob. It I didn't think, that oh, was man. the missing think, jigsaw I didn't think puzzle that piece. Tonight. <laughs> You're called gay eye. <laughs> 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 that would be the best ad ever. You were sick of chat GPT. It's time to switch up to gay eye. <laughs> Make life more fabulous. <laughs> life is so much better. <laughs> it gets better now, bitches. And then like Kelsey could or that football player could dump Taylor Swift to switch to gay eye and then he could run an ad for it. Where right after the, right Where after the Casey wins the Super Bowl. Oh, we 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 got to get Taylor Swift's um football bow hooked up with that one thing that does the Bud Light commercials. What 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 what's happening while the <laughs> circus is going on? Uh, what do you think they're gonna try to like slide by everybody while that whole Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, Fred I circus think I think they've been using. Yeah, I think they've been using <clears throat> Taylor Swift's current tour as a uh, a warm up and fine tuning for what they're going to do at the halftime at the Super Bowl. I think for I, I, for those of us who are able to watch it without being a part of it, I think we might begin to understand why people at her concerts are saying that they've been hypnotized. Do you think we're going to see Satan? I don't know. I have no clue. I would love to see a Travis Scott Moloch head set pop up on the end of the Taylor Swift and for Taylor Swift to go all uh, Christina Aguilera dirty like with Red Man style video and just get all slutty on stage with travis scott that that would be so lit unless people get hit with 5g fucking radiation and oh wait a second last time he had at the he, same time i'm not going to be impressed just, I'm just hey say. rob was travis scott the guy that had the concert in houston where all the people dropped dead yeah yes. yeah yeah that's Astro the one world. yeah there was a that's what that was yeah. like a, a frequency okay. test or something or everyone just got all shot up and then it was the vaccines causing heart attacks mass in the crowd it was something bizarre that's for sure but then, like, like, cause I've I was going to remix some Travis Scott, and I got to watching one of those videos, and I was listening to what he was saying through the mic as it was happening. Uh, well, tell you what, got, for for those listening, go watch the video yourself. Oh, he knew. Or be it from the Yona to pass judgment, but the motherfuckers <laughs> literally say, "Now jump up and down and stomp on him," and. Anyway, anyway, I mean, bro, yeah. bro, I, I, if that's not satanic, I really don't know what the fuck is. 
Uh, underground tunnels ritual. and child care. Yeah. Mark, Pas Mark Passio taught me to stay away from Satan. I mean, that guy's got, he's legit. He's intense, too, if you ever heard him. Well, he's intense for a reason. <laughs> he's, not, he's like, hey, I came out of this marshmallow club. Everything's soft and fluffy, so I'm going to be nice. No, he's intense because what he came out of is fucking stiff, rigid, and, mm. you know, costly. I remember the first time he was on Jan Irving's show. That was the very first time I ever heard Mark Passio was on Gnostic Media. And I was like, okay, this guy's probably in danger because, like, I don't think his coven or, you know, whatever you want to call it, wants him discussing some of these things and now he's got a whole platform so he must have some type of serious protection or this has been allowed you know one of the two externalization of the hierarchy is written he, he, down he part of the ruling Amish and he's just kind of on a rum springer right now I think you know pretty soon he's going to grow out the beard he'll be going back to raising barns and building gazebos again pretty soon this is just a phase he's, just living, a phase. Right, he's living right outside of Philadelphia I, I've seen him a few times I've met him and like when you're talking to him in a situation that isn't him giving a speech, he's like the like really low key, like soft spoken guy. And then when he gets up and starts giving his spiel, holy Christ, he's like talking all kinds of shit. You start feeling bad about yourself, thinking about your lack of uh, participation in the movement. And uh, he doesn't pull any punches, but He's like a hundred percent. Did guy. he did he do a speech at uh, Greater Reset, the one that just happened? I, I'm sure he was on the list, but I haven't uh, caught up with any of that yet. Well, I caught I caught like an hour presentation that he gave <laughs> recently. It was like within the last couple of weeks, and you're absolutely right. Like halfway through it, I was like, "Good God, I'm not doing as much as I possibly could. I feel like shit now." <laughs> 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 I I mean that's the general tone of all his speeches. He's he gets all fiery and uh tells you he's not gonna tell you what to do. he's gonna tell you what's you know reality and he I can't argue with him. You know the the key to dealing with Passio's energy is lots of weeds and give a fuck attitude. That's the only way you'll make it all the way to the end. Because you know I, I've watched a couple of them, and there's a couple times when I'll look up from my uh, dab hit, and I'll finally put the torch out, and, you know, I'll start thinking, you know, I really should be doing more. And then I'll look down at my honeydew list. I have a literal honeydew list from the wifey, you know. And <laughs> look at all this shit I'm supposed to do, and then I'll see, you know, that fucking trash is still sitting on the back porch, and then... I tune back into Mark Passio and then, uh, oh, wait, I've, I've still got two joints burning in the ashtray. I'm going to hit these again. And, uh, you know, and, and I make it through to the end. But <laughs> but I feel enriched as a person. He, he does bring it. No guilt here. Smoke more of the weeds. Fuck it. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a medicine, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I swear. Ganula hoagie. Nigada. That, that's Cherokee for smoke more of the weed. Ganula hoagie. Just say it with me. There you go. That sounds like a sandwich, too. Ganula ogly. It does. It hoagie. sounds kind of tasty. Like, like you're smoking a hoagie. Ganula hoagie. Yeah. Ganula hoagie. Mucho yeah. fumar. Fumate mas las hierbas. Ooh. Y hierbas mojadas. Que bueno. Mm. Mojada. <laughs> Mojado is my favorite word in Spanish, by the way. That's M O J A D O. Uh, it's Mojado. your favorite favorite word in English, too. Yep, moist. Yep. Moist. <laughs> Mojado, please. More hotties. Yeah, you know, it took me forever to figure out piso mojado. Because I didn't like consult, a, a, you know, a translation dictionary or anything like that. So it took like years. Because, you know, they could say that it's a wet floor, mm -hmm. but it's not really wet. It's just, just moist. moist. Yeah. It's just moist. <laughs> floor moist. He's a mojado. That's right. It's a different culture, you know. I mean, Peligro. The, the thing that I like best about Latin America, different from North America, you know. 
North America, you can always rely upon toilet paper pretty much in every stall. I, I, we discussed this the other night. Latin America, it's going to be right by the front door. Remember, as soon as you walk in the front door, right there by the sinks and the hand soap, mm -hmm. get your fucking toilet paper. That's the only toilet paper in the bathroom. Don't don't take a shit and then and then look. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> but in in North America, you know, you'll see the truck driver or the bread guy or whatever, you know, run around to the dry dock or behind a dumpster and and take a piss every now and then in America, North America, Merca land, freedom land. But in Latin America, bro, you can be riding on the city bus holding on for dear life because the bus driver is clearly on crystal meth. I mean, you can see his face in the big mirror. That's what's, what's with the facial spasms. And, and then you look out, the, and every time you go around a corner, there's somebody else literally taking a shit on the sidewalk. But to, uh, against a building corner and they've got toilet paper on both hands ready to go. Not San I'm like, they just drop <laughs> around the sidewalk fucking pull their pants up pull in their fucking uh... Oh, I, I haven't been to California in a while. Are you talking Kensington <laughs> Avenue again? <laughs> no, no, talking about two years ago my last trip to San Francisco. Oh, uh, California. Yeah, I see I haven't been to California since I left DLI. First the out there, within an hour of like getting in the city, I saw somebody sell like passing off a bundle of heroin to somebody on church steps. Then I was in a drugstore trying to buy something, and somebody ran up and snatched like a twenty dollar bill that some dude in a mobility cart had put on the counter to pay for his purchase. Ran to the door, but the security guy grabbed him, jacked him up against the wall a couple times. But then let him go, and he ran out with the money. And then later that night, some dude was taking a dump right on the freaking pedestrian walkway around Fisherman's Wharf. And when he went to pull his pants up, he had a uh, protruding anus. <laughs> or uh... oh, the the turtle head was still attached. No, not the turtle head. He had a protracted. Um... Oh, oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's what happens wow. when you, you know, the billfolds wear out after a while, especially a prison wallet. Um, but anyway. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it is San Francisco, too, so you should probably maybe yeah. expect to see that. I, I believe they call that rice a when when you have that, that prolapsed anus. Yeah, that, the San Francisco treat. Yeah. Me, me and a buddy were, like, hanging out to go to some uh, IT vendor party. And we had been staying there for a while, and there was another one somewhere else in the city. And yeah, we decided to bounce off of that one and go find the next one. And when we were walking, we went through like a couple blocks that were just like all tents of homeless people. And I I started like handing out cigarettes to keep us in good graces with the freaking crowd. And wow, my so, buddy, so my buddy is it safe to say? If if you hate Asbury's, avoid the hate Ashbury. Oh, it was nowhere near hate Ashbury. My last day in town, I walked through there, and Ooh. I I I went through like this little redwood forest and came out where there was a uh, a little park for children that had a sign that said adults must be <laughs> accompanied by child. <laughs> wow. And and I'm thinking to myself, I, I took a picture of it. There was nobody there at the time. I took a picture. I was like, wow, if they put a sign up, that must have been a problem with pedophiles coming and hanging out and watching Adults all their kids. Must be I think they had one of those signs at the dock on Little St. James Island down there in the U.S. <laughs> where where you dock your Zodiac boat there, Bill Clinton. You know, Adults yeah. must be accomplished, uh, accompanied by a child, right? <laughs> Lolita Airlines Express. Is kid friendly. <laughs> Everything's half off for kids. Anyway. Yoda, Yoda, I know you're familiar with the Talmud, and you know. Um, ooh, ooh, yeah. are we going back uh -oh. to Gazer's Stone City? Are we with getting the, thrown uh, off YouTube this week for babies? <laughs> oh no, is this on YouTube? Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Oh, uh, but but <laughs> but this is in reference to the Maria Abramovich recipe for, um. Uh, I think it's called placenta hummus. Anyways, you were saying, Rob? 
Um, you know, as far as the Talmud, I mean, that's it's totally legit, and everything written in there is probably the way that uh, the Creator intended it to be. So we can take solace in the fact that if if we don't, if we just look the other way when people are following that, then you know, nothing's going to happen. There's not going to be you know a flood or any kind of cataclysm to wipe us all out. So. Well, you know, the Talmud is weird because the Canaanites are weird. I mean, just look at the way it's spelled. Uh, do you need another A? I mean, really? What the fuck's <laughs> going on here? <laughs> Make it C-A-A-N-A-A-N. -A 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 you know, why not? Just be special, Canaan. You're, you're so special with your huge caves and baby sacrifice altars that have been pristinely preserved. And never bombed in the Holy Land. They never touch Gazer, do they? Um, G E Z E R. Check it out. What Gozer? Viewers available. Uh, Take the kids. Uh, maybe, maybe you can get a recreation. Wait till three a.m. in the morning. Is the, is the creation story like banned from YouTube? I mean, we've got multiple generations of. Uh, People talking the same flood story and cataclysm. You got to well, wonder what they're hiding from us. Cause you know, I like the way the chief describes it down in the Smoky Mountains. He says that all the humans, all the two-leggeds, are like fleas on a wet dog. But the wet dog is the earth. And whenever it wants to dry itself off, it'll just shake us all off and start all over again. Like, a, I mean, if you've ever seen a wet dog or a wet cat shake itself clean, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. What, what is it that the Hopi said uh, was uh, awaiting this world in the future? Uh, the rainbow prophecy of the great Hopi nation. Yeah. And the rainbow tribe, the renewal of the earth. Um, yeah, that's great if you're in the rainbow tribe. Uh, but for the sheeple people, um, would you like a new sweater? How about some lamb chops? Yeah, but what what did what was the prophecy? <laughs> well, the prophecy is about the beginning of the end and the end of the beginning because the patriarchy falls and the matriarchy reemerges and the earth renews itself. Um, but it's about the power of the earth overtaking the power of man. Um, which I guess is a elaborated way of saying cataclysm. Basically what Rob is saying. I mean, when, when nature attacks, that's a cataclysm. You know, whether it's a volcanic eruption or... Um, Sharknadoes, or uh, what the fuck ever happened in Lahaina with the circular um, oh, fires space lasers? And, that was a space, space laser. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Moral of the story: uh, get a blue tarp over your roof next time, mm. um, <laughs> and you'll be you know, fine. I'd be interested to find out how many people have had dreams uh, about uh, seeing a tidal wave uh, come in in their lives. Wow. I've dreamed of that tidal wave before, but I was always on a surfboard. Oh, nice. I'm about 100. 100 I wrote a song about one of those dreams. Psycho Bunny on a Skateboard. Oh, my God. And I don't have a recording of that. You know, I might need to re-record Psycho Bunny on a Skateboard. I'll have to do that for Daniel. No doubt. There you go. You've been pretty prolific lately. I don't know why it's not even a thing yet. So, <laughs> that, that's all. That's old stuff. That's a song I wrote um, with my band Kelpwood when I was in the army. Psycho Bunny on a skateboard. <laughs> it's the Psycho Bunny. What, what was your on a skateboard? What What was your impression of military readiness as a uh, low level soldier? 
Oh, man. I was in the Navy, and I, I, I'll i give you my impression after you, you go. I mean, I my my years of service was 1993, 1994. Um, and I would say about, well, of course, I was in the linguistics corps, paper pushers and stuff, and military intelligence. So... At, at least a quarter of our number at that time were like Paul Blart like physique. I mean, if it came down to hand to hand combat or having to bivouac for more than two days at a time, they're 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 done for. You know, um, just not because most of them were from the city. You know, um, that were in my job you know, my military occupational specialty or my MOS, 97 Lima, 98 Charlie, you know, which all of us already had some college before we ever joined the Army. So, you know, you're already talking about a bunch of fucking rich kids and brainiacs or other ones that are going to the officer corps. I mean, half the people studying languages with me were officers, and I'm this fucking, fucking E4 specialist with the upside down thing but you know um that i to me that the issue was the fact that they all were sheeple with the sheeple view of the world whereas i had i've always had this other view of the world which is turns out to be a more accurate view of the world that you know um world is it turns out the world really is run by a bunch of Satan worshiping, kid fucking, psychopathic maniacs, and they actually are out to kill us all. But as far as we that, can tell, it theory. always has been. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, as as the days go by, more and more receipts come out. You know, I, I came to that conclusion from a totally different angle, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> And, and that's what brings us together, isn't it? It's, it? Now I got the warm fuzzies all over. Warm fuzzies. Yeah. That and it's really good weed. Oh my god. Shit I, yeah. I I was just a uh undesignated airman on an aircraft carrier because even though I scored high enough on the ASVAB test to be a nuclear uh, engineer, I had a possession of marijuana charge and oh. they I had to get like clearance from somebody. I had to go sit with some female lieutenant and uh, tell her why my traffic tickets and possession of marijuana charge were uh, not like disqualifying for me to get in. So they put me in as an undesigned airman and put me on an aircraft carrier, pushing bombs around with a bunch of like half retarded people. And it was uh, very enlightening to me. Because, like, the people who would stay in, like, had nothing going for them. Like, they had no goal of, like, anything in the civilian world. And in the military, everybody has this, like, you know, the people, the, the civilians are, like, you know, lower than the people in the military, no matter how dumb these fucking people are. Well, yeah, because civilians are just maggot puke bags. Yeah, and as soon as you as soon as you have children, as soon as you get married, you qualify for extra money. Um, and then when you have kids, you get even more money. And these people get into these positions, like especially the job that I was in, pushing bombs around from the hangar bay up to the flight deck to the planes. Like these people had no skill that translated to the outside world. Yeah. So they were making with a, a wife and kids, they were making more than they would make, you know, going back to whatever they were actually able to do. Yeah, and, you know, there's Walmart a lesson to be learned here, Rob. If, if you're going to uh, break laws or commit infractions, it's much better to do that when you're already active duty. Take the case of Airman John McCain, right? You know, I mean, he had a couple <laughs> of... Um, I'll just call them uh, sloppy landings <laughs> where he killed <laughs> flight crew. Um, but he never lost his wings. He's fine. I mean, his dad was officer corps, so they're not going to do anything to look John I mean, boy. We can also forget all his. Uh... <laughs> Remember the forest all? Anyways, uh, yes. Yeah, speaking of pushing bombs around on flight deck, turns out that's dangerous. 
the, the four the four stall and his denouncements of his uh country <laughs> when he was yeah. <laughs> oh yeah yeah i forgot about his hanoi hotel fucking videos oh yeah yeah, yeah, because he was a uh, he was a powwow. I mean, a POW. Yeah, I mean, when, when <laughs> he your was a TV an star from way back in the day. Yeah, when your dad's an admiral and everything is fucking fake anyway, it's, <laughs> it doesn't take much to be a star. <laughs> hey, he was the maverick of Arizona. Come on now, the maverick. The maverick. I mean, I mean, he. he 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 ditched his crippled <laughs> wife just like a maverick would. <laughs> yeah, but great what American gets me hero. is great American hero. What gets me is like the whole incident when he killed those two flight crew and like not even an apology. Like, what a dick, yeah. man. Yeah, the, where the, is the hell, fight? Yona? The, the, the funny thing is when, you know, my generation, I don't know how much further before or after, but I know as far as my boot camp training, we watched a video of the forest stall because that was a, uh, you know, one of those pivotal Navy moments where they learned all about fire control and, you know, keeping the ship afloat kind of thing. So we, we watched the video. My uh, the first chief of my division when I was you know assigned to the USS Theodore Roosevelt, he was like a E one on the forest stall, so he was on it when that fucking fire broke uh, out because of McCain, and <laughs> he survived. Yeah, and how many people died in the USS Forest Stall disaster? I think like thousands. <laughs> They usually like it's his fault. My God. That's a hell of a blood sacrifice right there. That's what that wow. is. Hey, you want to be a maverick? You you want to make a maverick omelet? You gotta crack about a thousand hey. eggs, buddy. Hey, anyway. Here's here's the punchline. It was not enough souls to get him the presidency. Yeah. That's true. Oh, yeah. He, to... he didn't so he lose the joke that? was on him in the end. Yeah. All you have to do is pull the freaking uh, arming sequence on the missile that's on your plane, and you know, next thing you know, the whole fucking boat's on fire. <laughs> it's amazing how science works. You know, I, I'm just picturing one of these drizzle memes with uh, Elmo wearing the Navy bell bottoms, you know, and he's got the rooster tattoo on one of his red legs and the chicken tattoo on the other. <laughs> And of course, he's got his hands up, and behind him is the forest all in flames. You know, <laughs> like an Elmo in the Navy. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> and of course, Elmo was a seaman, first class. Oh, of course, first class. We're talking first class seaman here. Nothing gay at all. All right. Well, we've got about five minutes left, gentlemen, uh, until we hit midnight on the East Coast. Uh, this is your last chance to get anything and everything off of your chest for uh, this week, at least. You know, I got to wonder. Who in the fuck is racing to join the Coast Guard? Because, like, that's the one thing I remember more than anything else from language school in California. Weren't they absorbed there. into Space Force? No, they're they're still puddle pirates. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, I had a couple bubble heads and other squids in my class, Navy men, you know, and, and you know, bubble heads are, are submariners, you know, and they, and even at our place, they got to eat special food. I, I don't know what it is with submariners and special food. They, they get to eat. No one eats better in the U.S. military than submariners. It's crazy. They eat I, like I, gourmet food. I got a more prevalent uh, question for the, the, the current situation. Um, how how much propaganda and nonsensical bullshit do the typical American idiots have to hear before Iran really gets attacked and kicks off World War III? Ooh. I, I'm just imagining... Fresh, 
freshly trained boot camp grads from, you know, Great Lakes or <laughs> well, 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 Bliss or the, Leonard the, Wood going the, the over to the background of that. The background of that Taiwan. is they've they've been trying to attack Iran for at least the last twenty years. Uh, oh yeah, least. easy. They, they, well, they've been trying it, to. Yeah, like, that was supposed to be the the last of the the seven nations, right? Yeah, the whole exactly. Wesley Clark seven. Exactly. That but, I mean, great. Rob, how is the U.S. Navy supposed to have any type of naval battle against Iran's Navy or anybody else when it takes Ingersoll Rand over 10 years just to repaint a fucking sailboat? I mean, God damn, we have no shipbuilding capability. The okay. backlog on repairs to the naval fleet is at over, what, 25, almost 30 years deep now. I mean, China's me putting all the boats in the sea every year. They're the ones building you, everything. Let me tell you something you probably don't know about an aircraft carrier. <laughs> it has these little R2-D2 looking um, 50 caliber machine gun things. Yeah. And track and shoot down anything that comes within their range. It's all automated. Like I've seen them in action and it's like amazing. 5,000 rounds a minute or something like that. And something that I didn't know that they demonstrated to us while I was in is like those things can shoot off like intercon intercontinental missiles out of the fucking flight deck because they did a demonstration for us where they shot missiles off out of the flight deck of those things. Mm -hmm. But on, on the flip side, China, China and Russia have hypersonic missiles that can sink those things with one fucking missile. So, yeah. Yep, and and it's a non-ballistic hypersonic missile. So, um, you know, uh, put more boats in the water and see how long they float. <laughs> they, they have rail guns also, electromagnetic. Yeah. Well, I mean the the new launch, uh, the new launch mechanisms. You know, because there there's uh, assisted launch. Uh, off of the aircraft carrier and it used to have the cables and all the hydraulics from the old carrier fleets and the new technology is just like the railgun using electromagnetic propulsion to give them that extra oomph to get them off the flight deck and hopefully keep them out of the soup you know Let, let's not fool ourselves the uh uaps are u.s military um black ops projects that mm -hmm. they're not talking about yeah, that's, but, that's but you know, again, I, I say yeah, that right. <laughs> in terms of the actual fleet that we can put to sea, um, we don't have a numerical advantage anymore in the sea. I, mean, I think we have a superior techno technological advantage. Oh, I, I, I wouldn't I, be so sure. I of that. don't. I, don't know I wouldn't be so that. sure of that. Other people we, are we, launching you know, we have satellites fabulous too. Uh, technology, but, but they do too. The here's issue the is thing: we can't get things repaired or back to sea. We may not have to speculate about this much more. We may actually get to see who has the most superior military technology on the planet very, very soon, and that'll yeah. be our cliffhanger for this evening. Good night, ladies wow. and gentlemen. Great. Have a great night, everyone.